Hello and welcome back. In this video, I will recreate the engraved money effect in Affinity Photo based on an excellent video by Texture Labs. Link to the original video will be in the description. The main idea is to create a special texture and then apply this texture to an image. Creating the texture can be challenging in Affinity Photo as it works a bit differently compared to Photoshop. So let's start by creating a new document. We can do this in Affinity Photo by pressing the shortcut key Command N, which opens up a new document dialog. We are going to need a square document, as the texture we are going to create will be symmetrical. So I'm going to use 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. The first thing we need to do is to create a wavy pattern. For this, I'm going to use the new Pattern Layer option from the Layer menu. The pattern I'm going to use will be 10 by 10 pixels. Excellent! Now, let's zoom in to our pattern source. I'm going to fill the pattern with a simple black to white linear gradient by using the Gradient tool. Make sure the gradient starts and ends at the border of our pattern. Perfect! If we zoom out, we got all these lines now. Next step is to convert this to a wavy line. Affinity does not have a wave filter, so I'm going to use the Distort Equations filter. I have the formula in my clipboard and I'm going to paste the formula for the I value and then apply it. The formula used will be in the description. Hmm, interesting. We did not get any wavy lines. Why? Well, this is because we applied the filter on the pattern itself, which is only 10 by 10 pixels. Our intention was to have it apply to the whole canvas. So this is something to keep in mind when using pattern layers. Any changes in a pattern layer are always applied to the pattern and then the pattern is repeated. So. If we want to apply a filter to the visible canvas from a pattern layer, we need to rasterize it, so it becomes a regular pixel layer. I will duplicate the pattern layer first by right-clicking on the Layers panel and then selecting Duplicate. This way, I will still have a backup of it. Now I can rasterize this duplicate by again right-clicking on the Layers panel and then selecting Rasterize. You notice now the layer name has changed from pattern to pixel, which indicates that this layer is now a regular pixel layer. Now I can apply my wave equation to this layer by selecting filters from the menu followed by distort and equations. If I paste my formula to the I field, we get the waves we need. Awesome! Let's zoom in and have a closer look we get this nice waved line with a shadow. We now have our horizontal wave. We are going to need a vertical wave. For this, I will duplicate this pixel layer with the waved line. The idea is now to add the vertical lines in a grey tint on top of the horizontal waves. To achieve that, I'm going to add a fill layer and set its color to 50% grey. Next. I will use the duplicated waves layer as a mask to this fill layer, so we need to convert it to a mask. We can do this by right clicking on the layers panel and then selecting Rasterize to mask. After it becomes a mask, I'm going to move it as a clipping mask to the grey fill layer, so it will only mask that layer. Perfect! The wave mask is applied, but it is still being horizontal. So, we don't see a big difference. So let me rotate it counterclockwise to get the vertical lines. Excellent! Let me zoom in so we can see what happened. You see now, we have these vertical grey waves over the horizontal waves. And this is exactly the magical texture we need. Before moving on, we can optionally do some adjustments to it. First, we can slightly lower the opacity of the vertical waves. 
In the video of Texture Labs, a ripple effect is also applied to make it more organic. In my previous video, I showed how a ripple effect, like Photoshop, can be achieved. But that is a destructive technique, so I'm going to do a little bit different here. This time, I'm going to use a displacement map to get the ripples. Before doing that, I'm going to group these two layers and then apply the displacement to the group so the displacement filter will be applied to both layers. Let me add the displacement image I will use. By the way, I had two layers in my clipboard. That is why there are two layers added. But we will only use the visible layer as the displacement image. Before I can use this map, I will need to make sure it is below the group in the layer stack. Now, I can add the displacement filter to the group and select load map from layers beneath. This was exactly the reason why I needed to put the displacement image below the group. The displacement needs to be very subtle, so I think a value of 7 will work. As mentioned, these steps are optional. It just makes the texture a bit more natural because of the imperfections we added. Our texture is ready. Time to apply it to an image. I will paste my image and make sure it will be below the texture. And not in the group of course. The next magical step is to change the blend mode of the texture group to hard mix. Awesome, have a look at that. Pretty cool. You can keep it as it is, but to get that money printed look we can apply a black and white adjustment on top of our image. By adjusting the colors, we can control the effect. Cool. Let me move the black and white adjustment as a child to the image so the document is a bit more organized. To control the texture effect a bit more, we can adjust its fill. As Affinity does not have a fill slider, we need to use the gray fill workaround, which I explained in my earlier videos. So, I can add a 50% gray fill change the blend mode of a hard mix group to normal and group it with the gray fill layer. I can now set the blend mode of the new group to hard mix and change the opacity of the original group, which now acts like a fill slider similar to Photoshop. As I play with the opacity, or in this case the fill, you notice how we control the effect. I'm going to keep it around 75%. I'm also going to lower the opacity of the master group, so I get a bit more depth in the image, as the shadows and the highlights from the image are shown through. This is of course totally optional. Time to color the image. There are a couple of ways on doing this. Here is one method. I will first add a curves layer and flatten the end result. By flattening, I make the blacks and the whites more grey. I can now add a recolor adjustment on top of it and let's go for a green color. Because I made the blacks and the whites more grey, the recolor is applied to the whole image. Of course this looks way oversaturated, but with the help of blend ranges I can control this and get the whites back. Awesome! Let me group these two adjustments so I can turn them off easily and show you another method. This time we can use a gradient map to replace the black and the white color to a color of our liking, like this dark green and this yellowish white. Again, with the blend ranges we can control it slightly. Before I leave you, let me share the final adjustment which is adding a bit more texture to it. I will add a paper texture to the document and move it above the image. I'll also temporarily Disable the texture layer so we can see its effect on the image. To get the paper texture into the image, I'm going to use the linear burn blend mode. Awesome! Let me enable the texture and the color adjustments. Pretty cool! Because of the linear burn blend mode, the image gets quite darker. We can fix that by adding a curves layer on top of it and adjusting it as we see fit. And that's it for today's video! You can keep watching if you're interested in seeing some more fine-tunements. As most of our adjustments are non-destructive, it is very easy to fine-tune the composition as you like. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to support my channel. Thank you so much for watching, 
keep safe and keep being creative. Until the next video.